Welcome to Monday classes. I am Dorsa Darashani. I am here to impersonate Caleb Denby. Um, too bad he couldn't be here for this one, but um, I heard you guys have been doing Nidorf, so I'm gonna do my best to try and hold on to what Caleb has been doing. All right, um, so I decided to show some of my personal games, um, two against my current teammates. So I go to Sluice and Peace University, and the two Dutch boys that we have, Robbie Kivlishvili and Benjamin Book, I actually played with them back in 2015. And uh, kind of funny how I actually um, got a pretty good score against them, considering they were both higher rated than I am. Well, let me rephrase that. Back in 2015, Robbie uh, was a little bit less than me in rating. Well, he's higher now. So, well, still. So I managed to have a be quite a beautiful win against Robbie and uh, get a draw against Benjamin. So I decided that it would be kind of cool to show those for now. Okay. So, um, without much more, let's just jump in. So, this is the first game that I want to show you. This is uh, the game that I played against Ravi. This was in the tournament Cultural Village in Wick and Z. This was like, if you win this tournament, you would qualify for Wick and Z B. I did not win this tournament, <laughs> but it was a very great experience. I remember um, Mr. Sutovsky recommended me, so thanks to him. Uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting how you meet people in the chess society and you just play some tournament and then some some little kid back then now ends up being your teammate. Whoa. Oh, hello from Nigeria. Great. Okay. So, um, oops, I am on the wrong board. All right, there we go. Um, so in this Sicilian, I actually, um, full disclosure, it was quite <laughs> nice preparation, and um, I knew what he, I, I took a look at his scores on chess base, and I saw that his recent games, he he had bad scores against this f4. So I uh, kind of chose to give this a try. Uh, to give this a try, oops, English, <laughs> and um, well, actually, it kind of paid off. So I'm glad that I made that choice. Um, and yeah, so this is something that I've talked about in some of my other um, videos too. That's actually uh, understanding your opponent's weaknesses and understanding your own strengths is really important. Is just as important as actually preparing before like you do calculations you do openings you also need to do this kind of preparations against opponents so um preparation is important guys I'm not gonna lie about it I'm not gonna um downplay it so in this game i chose a four mainly because i saw that he had bad results against it so uh after e5 Knight back to f3, knight d7, all of this is normal theory. Um, I assume something like with queen c7 is also possible, but or like queen b6, these are also possible, but knight d7 is the most um, popular one. Yeah, um, there are a lot of the openings that we play right now, or I'm telling you right now, it's kind of changed because it's been like four or five years. So a lot of different things have came up. Um, a lot of strong engines have gotten stronger. So um, if you choose to look at some opening, if you like it, uh, make sure that you check the games that's happened since then. Or that's one of the things that I had a lot of problem with growing up. Like I would see this cool game in Drew Lopez. I wanted to replicate it, and guess what? Nobody plays that anymore. So yeah. Make sure you keep your uh, repertoire and your chess knowledge up to date as much as possible. Okay, um, so my idea with a4 was to basically stop b5 and potentially do this bishop c4. So 
Um, still, I was. It was kind of still deep in preparation. So still, I'm not completely um, sitting down and using my own brain at the chessboard. I've used my brain before the chessboard to get <laughs> to this position. Um, so. Yeah, this is not Grand Prix. Grand Prix is with Knight C3 F4, you're correct. And I've played Grand Prix before. I play it sometimes these days in Blitz and Bullet 2. Alright, um, yeah, we do this early F because um, early F4 is a little bit um, not, it's not so popular. Um, more The most popular ones are, with bish are like Bishop G5 instead of F4, or Bishop E3, F3, Long Castle. But um, F4 is also a little, um, it's kind of like, to me, it was a very interesting little um, sidearm. So after take, take. So in this kind of position, you can immediately see this square is weak. Black uh, kind of owns the square. This pawn is weak. So it's a matter of if you can eat his pawn uh, or if he can defend the pawn and cover it up with the knight e5. Um, you can't really stop knight e5 right now, but I'm going to go ahead and ask my first question from the chat. Uh, do you guys think taking on e5 is a good choice or not? So basically, why to move and what do you want to do? I'm reading the chat and... Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so I saw a no, that's good. You wouldn't take, great. So if you wouldn't take, then what would you do? You have limited choices on what to do with your bishop. Okay, I see a bishop b3. Okay. All right, yeah, I think bishop b3 would be the most interesting. Um, taking on e5 is not very desirable because you're kind of fixing that problem. You're also giving this bishop this diagonal. And no, uh, let's not give opponents free gifts. I'm really against giving opponents free gifts. So yes, we do have to move this bishop. So we can go to a2 or we could think about bishop d5. I believe bishop d5 was still something that I looked at before game. And now if knight takes, all right, great. I'll just take that with the knight. I'm attacking this guy. You move the queen. I can simply take on, uh, well, actually, I can take on here. Never mind. This is even easier. i just pick up the pawn. Um, if you get creative and do something like queen b8 to be defending this, I could simply take on e7 or even do knight b6. There are way too many options. Um, Another option is trying to just castle. But yeah, you have lots of options, lots of good options. So uh, something like queen b8 also doesn't work. So black should not take the bishop on d5. Um, something that's uh, kind of funny, we talked in this, the mor this morning camp with um, some of the kids was the concept of prophylaxy and trying to do some um, provoking opponent into making a mistake. So bishop d5 is something like that. You're trying to provoke your opponent to making a mistake and take here. So um, that's why we'd like bishop d5. Uh, Robbie was a smart kid. He didn't take it. He castled. Simple castle and he played bishop g4. So question from the audience. What should we do now? This is a very normal position. Uh, there's not, uh, I can't say white is better or black is better. Mm, both have equal fighting chances. And we are both, mm, we are trying to just uh, create more weaknesses for the opponent. And we are also trying to um, put some pressure. So now what should we do? Black played bishop g4, putting pressure on f3. Um, I think it's worth considering uh, taking on e5, but I don't think we should do that. Just because if you take on e5 after take, you fix this problem, you, fix this, you fixed this bad pawn. You are also giving this um, bishop some 
this diagonal and we don't really want to do that. So exactly, thank you uh, Yaroslav. We are going to play king h1. So um, after king h1, let's say black simply plays something like rook c8, right? Because, whoops, okay, rook c8. Because rook c8 is interesting and the thing is, well, if black just takes over here, we'll just simply take back, uh, slippery mouse, and then we're just going to play rook g1, we're just going to put the rook on d1 potentially, put the rook on g1. This is very, um, this is very just simple, simple stuff. You're just developing and putting more pressure on black. So there's not much to think about for black, like bishop g4 was interesting because it's putting pressure, but at the same time black doesn't really have an intention of taking it just yet. So, uh, rook c8, in the game I went with queen f2 because guess what, I had actually just finished reading um, the, it, there was the, the Giants of Strategy book, they're, they actually, actually have like a whole chapter on prophylaxis and um, uh, provoking opponent to make mistakes. So I had actually finished reading that book before this tournament. So I was kind of um, humped to just just play something like this provocate pro. I can't say that a provoking opponent into making mistakes. Uh, the book is called Giants of Strategy. I've done a few games from them in my videos. And, okay. Um, actually, in the game, Robbie did take here. I have to take back. He went bishop e6. I don't think it would have made a difference if something like bishop h3. Uh, and after bishop h3, rook g1, and now this is actually some serious issues for black. So black wouldn't want to push for bishop h3. So black played bishop e6, rook g1, take, finally. Now, white to move, what do you think we should do here? You have some choices on uh, what to do with white. You could uh, take back with pawn, with knight, anybody sees any intermediate moves? Intermediate moves are great. They're a chess player's best friend. Intermediate moves. Anybody see something? Any checks? Any threats? Queen g3 is interesting, but the problem with queen g3 is simply knight h5 and stops the whole thing. Thank you, Axel. Bishop h6. Yeah. Uh, queen g3 is not very um, desirable because first glance knight h5. You gotta play like queen g4, then bishop goes to e6, whoops, bishop goes to e6, and even if you take, then there's g6. So, that's not really, um, very, yeah, we don't want, we don't want knight h5. We prefer bishop h6. Uh, g6 is forced, now you have a choice. Do you want to take on d5, or you want to take on, whoops, f8. Um, about candidates, the last thing I heard was that uh, it's postponed again. Players requested to feed it to postpone it, and according to my last info, it is postponed, but no idea when. Ooh, I see there is a healthy debate on what to take. Nice. Kind of 50-50, but I uh, know we, we should take on F8. Taking on f8 is better because if you actually move this bishop, I'll also take on e7, and now your uh, dark squares are also weak, so I can like start pushing over here. So uh, we could simply just take it there. We don't really have to worry about. Um, we don't really have to worry about not taking back. So black has to take back. Now we simply take here, take take and this was the game and in the game I think Robbie made a little bit of a um, harsh decision and he's just played queen takes c2 I think exchanging queens was not very wise something like queen c4 might have been a little bit um, better just because going after d5 going after c2 just trying to keep pressure 
Like if I play rook a d1, maybe now you can think about taking on a4. So I think this would have been more interesting, but uh, still, I would have played something like queen d2. I mean, white is still better, but black would have better fighting chances. All right. So um, let's go back. Take, take. Rabbi took on c2. Take, take. Yeah, exactly. Kind of. I kind of got all I wanted. Rook c1. And he also took on b2, which was like Christmas morning for me. Um, taking, I went just like, I just went to the back rank, got that whole um, back rank too. If something like king g7, uh, it still doesn't make any uh, healthy differences because still bishop can't run away. Everything is kind of stuck. So in the game, Robert just played rook e2, trying to... Uh, get the chance to play bishop e7. I um, kind of rushed a little. I should have played rook b1. Rook b1 would have been the best choice. And after b5, take, 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 for example, then I could have pushed for that. But I really wanted to keep that a pawn and potentially um, just make it a healthy baby queen. So I just played a5 with hopes of uh, just eating b7 and a6 and making a queen. So the pieces do move on slow-mo, not sure why though. So Robby played king g7, um, rook b8, bishop b7, let's just eat that. I'm going to go a little faster over here because all of these are just normal moves. I am eating pawns, he's trying to attack my pawns. Uh, rook a2 wouldn't be possible because the bishop is under attack, so he tried to free the bishop first, but still uh, it's a little too late. Um, here is pretty much, um, it's not that hard to find the win. Rook a7, take there, I take that guy. Um, just have to remember not to basically blunder your pieces. And this was a pretty uh, chill win for me. I just brought the king over a little bit, just brought the king closer, trying to avoid checks. And this is something that I actually talked about in the last week, Tuesday's Chess and Psychology, about repeating moves and how it gives opponent hope. I'm going backwards now. So I gave my opponent some hopes that, hey, maybe I want to draw, when I actually had no intentions of making that draw. So. It was kind of nice to um, do that little psychological trick too. Anyways, this the game is pretty much over. I'm just trying to show you how it ends. And actually, this slow-mo is kind of going against my vibe. But uh, this is not really hard to win this though, right? You just, you just win the rook and just try to give a healthy checkmate soon all right and he actually resigned here because after f5 falls all of these are falling and it's kind of would be a little bit insulting to continue but uh this was a very nice game and he's a very nice kid so if you see him if you know him don't mention this game to him <laughs> all right uh it was a good game so now let me show you another game that i had with another teammate back in 2015 when I had didn't even I don't think 2015 St. Louis University they actually had a chess team so all right so this game is uh, was played versus Benjamin Book another Dutchman another teammate and uh, this was also a very good game um, he was very close to crossing 2600 and I was kind of on my hunt for my 2400 and he, he got his, I got mine, I got my title, uh, I am title, unfortunately they don't really give out titles for 26, crossing 2600s, that's, that's something that I've actually thought about a lot, maybe a super GM title for uh, 2650, 2700s would be actually quite, quite nice. Anywho, um, back to real, uh, real life instead of fantasies. So in this game, this was actually in Chigorin Memorial. This was actually before when I played Robbie. I should have showed this first. So 
Um, now we are looking at another night dwarf, but this one, it was kind of a little bit uh, more like Scheveningen compared to night dwarf. I was very prepared for a night dwarf and I wanted to play a new line that I was working on with like trying to play, oops, then something with bishop to e2 and queen d3, which I'm hoping to show you right after this game, which means I have to kind of rush through this. Um, but it unfortunately didn't happen and he just went for e6. Uh, I remember in the game he kind of just really really thought a lot about when, uh, what to do. So, um, I assume he wanted to kind of run away from my prep. Good thought, because I was quite prepared. <laughs> Um, yeah, a lot of people are doing instead of bishop e3, there, there's so many lines, there's bishop g5, there's bishop e3, there's bishop e2, defending if you want to do short castle, you want to do long castle, you can play rook g1, you can play h3, you can do f4, kind of running out of moves here, but oh, there's f3, let's not forget about that, depending on what you, where you want to put this knight, thank you, yes, there's also a g4, I believe there is early moving the knights back to e2, yeah, it's a, it's a headache. So, so many, so many knight drift lines for Caleb to cover. <laughs> but um, for me, oh yes, queen f3, forgot about that. For me, I am just showing some of my own experiences. I have talked about knight drift in uh, different videos as well. There was a game that I played with bishop c4. Uh, there were quite a few games that I played with trying to do like h3 and f4 so feel free to check those out too or should be all in YouTube uh, for the club anyways g3 forgot g3 okay there's so many moves I'm gonna keep forgetting one or two of them so I went with bishop e3 and after e6 I simply played bishop d3 so Back in the day, I wanted to try this queen f3 long castle and like queen h3 f4 idea against Neidorf or Scheveningen. So um, I just wanted to stick with what I prepared and I just kind of just went along with it. Uh, here, actually, knight a4 would have been better. So for those of you who are trying to find an interesting idea against Nidorf, this could be it. You could think about having this bishop e3, bishop d3, queen f3, queen h3. Um, you could do long castle or short castle. I was going to do short castle and then f4. So um, you can think about that. All right. Uh, bishop d3, b5, f4. B4, knight back. Now, this is another square that we can try and hop into. Alright, so bishop b7, gotta defend the pawn. Now, knight d2, especially because knight c5 was coming. And now, um, why to move? What do you want to do? Should, do? Do you want to take this? Do you want to move the knight? Also, I do agree, bishop d3 is not the most ideal place for the bishop, but uh, you're always going to have one piece that's going to be lag kind of like lagging behind for a bit. And in this game, the bishop on d3 is that. So your bishop is kind of in a defensive mode because you have this weak pawn, unless you were going to play f3, and that would be the whole different reasoning. And yes, knight f5. Um, we shouldn't really take here because um, simply knight takes back and you're giving this a square to your opponent. That's something that you, uh, as neither of, um, someone who's playing against neither of, or playing against most Sicilians, uh, you should know to it's. You should just be aware of that giving this a square up. It's usually uh, gonna be quite painful in the long run. So unless you know exactly what you're doing, you shouldn't really give it up that easily. So he went for g6. Let's get the knight back. And he played bishop g7. I think d5 was also a potential um, move. But then we just put castle or oh f5 maybe. Yeah, I think f5 is also interesting. So yeah, I think f5 is kind of interesting if d4, just bishop g5. Whoops. Yeah, I think this is good for white. 
Another thing is if black tries to like h5 to followed by h4, uh, we could still try for f5. We could push for knight c4, try to poke around here a little. Now this would, uh, these would all be kind of cool anyways. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly, Mattel. D5 is usually something that black wants to achieve um, in Sicilian, especially in Nidorf. So, got the knight to g3, bishop g7. Now, question. Why to move? What should we do? I think a move such as castle is normal, but we could simply think about um, something a little bit more... Um, a little bit more... How to say? Tricky, maybe? Uh, yeah, f5 is also definitely possible, but that's not the move I went for. f5 would have been interesting, but I was a little worried if he just ignores it and castles, or what if he plays d5. I was a little worried about these, and I decided to try and play something a little bit more um, tricky. I went for knight c4, just because attacking d6, and if you push d5, now I can also just eat that. Not that he would make this mistake, but it's always good to just lay out the trap. So, uh, after knight c4, um, best move was to play something between queen e7 or queen c7, and he chose queen c7. Now we can just do castle. Uh, long castle is actually not a good choice, because after long castle, short castle, and black has advantage. Um, Black is clearly more advanced in attacking you than you are attacking him. D5 is coming. This guy is coming. It is no. It's not. It's not very pleasant. You still have to figure out where to put this knight. Uh, and yeah, Black has a clear head start on your uh, king. So don't want to have that. So let's just do short castle. Short castle. And now, um, white to move. What should we do? I, I think you have quite quite a nice choice on trying to take on e5 or push on f5 or um, maybe develop a rook or something. So yeah, what do you want to do? Uh, you gotta be careful if you start doing some stuff with. Um, like knight e2, g4, it's a little, it's kind of a little rushed. So, gotta be careful with those. Hmm, maybe a3? No, uh, so keep, keep in mind, you should think about, um, always you should think about takes, checks first, and takes, then moves the threats, you should at least keep an eye out for them. So, do you see any reasonable checks? Well, actually, any legal checks? No. Any reasonable takes? Yes. Fe5 is a reasonable take, so you should think about it a little bit at least before dismissing it. Uh, Rook D1 is an okay move, but keep in mind that black wants to play D5. So, if you just play too chill, black's gonna just play this D5 and. Yeah, it's not going to be very um, pleasant. No, f5, there is still d5. So, d5 is a serious threat right now. So, we should take that seriously, and that's why we should take it. If you were to play f5, there is d5. If you take, oh boy. You can just take that to the bishop. Now, this is falling, so you have to play queen e2. Now, this is falling, you can't really stop that. Your bishop is trapped. So, yes. Please don't blunder. Don't give your opponent free stuff. And, alright. So, that's why we should simply play f takes e5. And, yeah. Exactly. So, now uh, we would... Now let me ask you. Um... White to move, what do you think we should do? Where do you think in the board we can try and improve?
we could think about can you improve any more in king side or center if not can you improve any more in the queen side I see king h1, I see rook d1. Um, both of those would be interesting if you didn't have... Um, okay, so I understand not wanting checks, but Louis, you're correct. a3 is the best one. You gotta... This is, a, this is like a um, weakness that you have to try and go after. So... How to go after it? You can think about c3, you can think about a3, you can't really uh, go after it more directly than that, but a3 would be better because, whoops, not that, if take, take, now you're, uh, you're actually having a new um, target to go after, right? So, that's why we prefer a3. Exactly, we want to open up files for rooks. So... Um, now, after a3, best move for black was to actually play a5. So now, what do you think we should do? Remember, we talked about reasonable takes and how we should think about them. Is this a, is this a reasonable take? Do we like it? Do we not like it? Do you want to just play bishop d2? I, I do like the idea of king h1, but I still think it's, um, it doesn't go with the flow of the game. So, and hello, Albert. Yes, exactly, Keith. Good job. Take, take, and bishop d2. So now, black to move. Black actually has a good, uh, black actually has a very interesting comeback. So what do you think black can do? A hint in the game, my opponent played take on a1. That was an okay move, not, a, not anything special. So you see anything a little bit special? Check with queen, protect pawn. No, not necessarily. I mean, yes, you can do queen c5, but queen c5, I will simply just move the king away. This doesn't really help you. Yes, it's defending the pawn, but it, it's not really... I mean, the queen is quite misplaced here, so you're going to have some problems. So... get back to the position with our slow-mo test.com board so anything else anybody oh I see some b3s yeah exactly good job on those of you who thought about b3 yeah b3 was the little tricky because if I take it now black actually has these weaknesses to go after so yeah um, and then after this, uh, could have taken on a1, take back, and then something like knight c5, going after all of these stuff. Uh, kind of funny, because um, Benjamin took here first and then played b3, so it was a transposition. And in this game, so in this position, white to move, what do you think we should do? Bishop a6 instead of b3 was a valid choice, but b3 is much stronger. So, keep thinking about intermediate moves. Just because your opponent's attacking this bishop doesn't mean you have to move this bishop one square back. Bishop b4, interesting, but not interesting enough, sorry. We need something a little bit more. 
Bishop, mm, no, I think maybe bishop b4. Uh, what I was worried about with bishop b4 was just simply if something like rook b8. And now this is another problem. So, thank you, Matthew. Yeah, bishop a5. Bishop a5, kind of forcing the queen to go away. If you were to play bishop c2, knight goes to e6 and then jumps over here. Uh, or simply could take over here and um, you still get to a kind of similar position as I got in the game, but this feels a little bit better for black because black could even just do this sacrifice potentially and try and jump in c5, go after here. I mean, I'm not saying that I don't, I don't think Mm, this sacrifice is too realistic in the game. Like I'm saying, I don't think my opponents would have done this. This sacrifice, the giving up the exchange. But um, I didn't feel comfortable knowing that it existed and it was good enough to be considered. Um, all right, so bishop a5, queen d7, now bishop c2. In the game, um, Benjamin just took over here. I still think knight e6 would have been more annoying for me, just knight e6, then knight d4, voila. So he took on e4, take back, take back, and intermediate moves, you guys, intermediate moves. Because keep in mind, if you take on here, then there is this queen d4, and then bishop takes your bishop, and technically you are not down material, actually you have one more pawn if... Nope, never mind. Sorry, he just took back the pawn. Uh, but it's still quite unpleasant. These bishop on e4, just monstrous attacking your king. Yeah, we don't want that. So, that's why you should always consider intermediate moves. Finally, we got into this end game, and all right. So, white to move. What should we do? Keep in mind, there are still some weaknesses around here that you can try and exploit. So, put, yeah, I think you should go after this guy. So that should limit your options. Um, G4 doesn't really work because you're not really threatening anything. I can simply just play like, can I just play, um, maybe just Bishop D5? You take over here, I'll take over there. Mm, and now, whoa, bishop d4. Yeah, I don't really like these two bishops. g4 kind of weakens the king, and with two bishops, it's not worth it. Yeah, bishop c3 is the best one. He went with rook b8, and now I decided to just push this pawn. It would have been okay to also bring out the king, and just like try and go to the other side. But I liked the idea of having this bishop pinned, so I simply went for b4. Now I'm questioning my opponent. What do you want to do? Um, I could have taken on e5, I assume, but I did not like the idea of giving rook d2. So maybe we could have taken with knight, potentially. But still, take, take, rook d2. Defense this, but this is a problem. G3, rook goes there. Yeah, no, 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 no. Let's not give too much uh, potential to opponents. So I just went for B4. And now we take this, because it's with check, right? Take, take, check. All right, so in the game, I played knight C4, but I think knight G4 would have been even a little bit more um, interesting. You gotta move the king, whoops. Now I can try with like king f2 or knight f2 and try to take that. Anyways, I went with knight c4 because I just wanted to stop rook d2. And knight d6. Alright, so who here thinks this endgame... Well, actually, let me rephrase the question. What do you guys think about this endgame? Take, take, take. Why to move? What should we do? This, is this endgame winning, losing, draw? Most likely draw, but you would have to play it very precise. Which I actually messed up here a little bit. 
Um, I played rookie too. Not the best move. What do you think we should do? What's your idea of a rookie three? Just because you want to play B three? Okay. Ah, whoa. No, no, no. Bad king. But that's the thing. I think it's better to play. Whoops. Nope. It's better to play B three first. And if take, all right, take draw. I agree. This is an easy peasy draw. But if not take, what if king goes to E five? Then what do you want to do? Rook to E three or rook to B one? That's the thing, if you were to play rook e3, uh, it creates some, some issues with like, if what if king goes to, hold on, mm, I thought uh, something just like waiting moves like rook b6, and then just, what if black keeps on waiting and just starts pushing these pawns, your rook is kind of just stuck. So uh, honestly, rook e3 is the move I was going for, but rook b1 is better. And then you would just sit here and wait. Basically, you would put the king on e2 and just wait. Rook b2, rook b1. Just wait. And now this is a draw. This is a very easy draw. Black hands make his position better. I can't do anything. Might as well just shake hands. So uh, I thought about b3, but I was a little afraid of rook e3. So I played rook e2. I kind of forgot about rook b1 in the game. So after king e5, king f2, uh, yeah, exactly. Rook b1 is inactive, but at the same time, black doesn't really have anything, can't advance anything. And if black decides to move the rook elsewhere, then we get b4, b5, and everything. So um, king f2, he played h5. And in the game, I just played rook c2 because I wanted to try and activate my rook. And, uh, all right, this position, rook takes b2, white to move, what should we do? You have to calculate this pretty good, because rook c5 is the first move you're going to think about, but after rook c5, king e6, what are you going to do? Are you going to take on e4? Because then you're going to lose g2 and h2. So... You should play rook c5, yes. That's not the question. My question is what after rook c5? No, you shouldn't play rook c4, we see. If you play rook c4, you're going to lose g2, h2. Uh, also, rook c4, there is simply rook b3 check. It's not, uh, yeah, that's not really nice. Just check and you got to move the king and then the king can also come to just like uh, there. This pawn pushes, yeah, no. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, you've got to play rook c5. That's not the question, though. Let's say king goes to f6. Now what do you want to do? This is kind of a critical position. So what do you guys think we should do? Why did I give up b2? Because I kind of had to. It was a matter of choice of being super inactive and allowing the black king to get in. Or give up that pawn and um, find the right move. It is possible to take on e4, yes. If you take on e4, however, then rook takes g2, then what do you want to do? Because you are losing your h2 pawn, so you better, you might as well know exactly what you're going to do. Best move here is actually to play king f3, take king g4. Just make him wait. If h3, rook c3, and you just pick this up. So it is possible to take on e4, but you could also play g4. g4 is also quite interesting. You take g5 check, you put that king in basically in a blanket, make a king burrito out of it, 
and you take over here and then you just simply bring your king to g4 and put pressure on this eventually you'll pick this up with your rook and then that is a draw end game so in the game i actually went for rook c6 check and then uh rook c5 and finally i did this g3 uh, we could simply again take over here but if take on g2 you have to still very be very precise and i was a little afraid on what i was doing and i didn't really want to give both pawns so i really wanted to um just try and cover up no actually g3 is not a bad choice uh, g3 problem is not that it takes the problem is with h3 so h3 then we could try actually i'm gonna ask what do you think we should do after h3 what do you think uh, white's best move is because if you take on e4 rook takes h2 and then that pawn is very close to becoming a queen Nope, we can't take on e4. You take on e4, that h3 pawn is becoming a queen. Nope, we're not going to resign. We're going to play king f4 and then go to g4 and pick this up. So, yeah, if you take on h2, just king g4. And it's it's kind of about um, how you are putting pressure on opponents. If e3, rook here, oh, hold on. Yes, yeah, e2, and it's kind of like a black can't really uh, promote his position. And you're just simply going to wait and chill while black is kind of suffering. You touch this rook, you lose this. You touch it that way, you lose that. So it's a very nice um, kind of a zigzongish position. And yeah, I like this. Okay, so let me go back to where we draft. Ah, there we go. So uh, what do you do after rook takes h2? What now? What should we do? Are you going to take on h4? Are you going to play g4? Are you going to take on e4? Take on h4? Uh, not really. Uh, I mean... Yes, you can, but if you take on h4, then rook takes back, and now g5 is coming, and then this king is getting activated, and it's not quite pleasant. So, you could simply um, take on... Whoops. Nope. Ah, stop going back and forth. There we go. You could simply take on e4. Now, after take on e4, um, black has two choices between h3 and h takes g3. What do you think black should do? How, how are you guys liking this Knight of Endgame? Is it good? We got through two different setups in Knight of, so as long as we get some Endgame in two, it's been a very full class, right? So what do you think? Let me ask you again. So let's say black plays... Um, let's say black takes on G3. Now what do you, what do you want to do? kind of have to come back, right? You kind of do have to play this king f3, g2, king f2. Again, waiting and waiting for opponents. And uh, you have two choices. You can either um, just move the rook and let me eat this, or I'm going to come attack your rook and then pick it up. So um, you are losing g2 regardless. Um, so, and this end game is draw. I'm cutting your king, you're cutting my king. Also, it's g pawn, so... Pff, can't get any more draw than this actually i will show you it can <laughs> uh all right so in the game uh, benjamin played h3 
I went king f3 because we need to keep the king closed because if not then there is rook moves and this pawn wants to become a queen, right? So, king g4. Uh, I think king g4 was also kind of a cool move because if you play h2 then I have king h3 and again king is coming to g2 and you are going to lose this pawn. I think that's actually a, king g4 is a move that he missed when we were analyzing the game after the, the game was done. But, okay, anyways, he went with king g7. i just give a check. i just let's go for this pawn. And, alright, I'm going to kind of uh, scroll through the rest of the game because this is pretty drawish, but um, quite interesting. We continued until, well, you'll see. He's, uh, he's still pushing, he's hoping I'm going to make a mistake, but I mean it's really hard to make a mistake in this endgame. Uh, especially when the pawns and the pawn on the fifth rank, and yeah, this is a this is a super draw, right? And finally, we all know how this works, right? We did so much extensive work on king and pawn warfare. So, yeah, exactly, Fragness. That's what I did. I gave up the pawn, G pawn, and it was a draw. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, two different sets up setups in Nidorf, and basically my experience with my Dutch teammates. <laughs> back in 2015. Maybe we should rename the video then. And yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm sorry, that was a misfire. You can keep going. Oh, no, I was just gonna say that I'll see you back in Twitch in about five to 10 minutes. Be sure to tune in for that. We're gonna do tactics and I have lots of puzzles for you. See you soon.